morning. Welcome to End of Week News with Ainsley Bullion. Pretty bit of volatility last night in the markets with jobs data coming through from the US and Australia. A bit of a dip in gold and silver, but then they picked right back up again straight away. So today we're talking jobs reality and the V-shaped recovery. Another sea of red on Wall Street last night with everything sold off. The reasons are not completely clear, but it would appear that a mixture of the Fed not being dovish enough yesterday, we want more, and worse than expected US initial jobless claim numbers. In a world where everything is relative, the market had been high-fiving over weekly initial jobless claims being less than 1 million for three weeks in a row. Last night's print was worse than expected, with 860,000 jobs or 912,000 seasonally adjusted people unemployed. Whilst without the benefit of perspective, 860,000 new jobless claims in one week seems awful. We need to remember how incredibly bad it was back in April when we were seeing over 5 million per week, shown in this next chart here. Never seen before. But the issue with a glance of the previously shown chart is that it appears like the V is in and we are back to normal levels. You zoom out all the way back to 1967 when the data began and look closely, you can see that 912,000 is at least 50% higher than the worst periods of any recession we've had before it. So shown in this next chart here as well. Now closer to home, we also saw high-fiving and a surge in the Australian dollar on our better-than-expected unemployment figures yesterday. The headline figure that most don't look past saw 111,000 new people employed and the unemployment figure dropping from 7.5 to 6.8%. Pop the cork, toast, and move on. However, a scratch on the surface reveals that things aren't as awesome as they seem, if 6.8% could be considered awesome. Welcome to the gig economy. Nearly all those new jobs are are newly self-employed people hiring themselves out. As Deutsche Bank economist Phil O'Donohoe explains, delivery drivers and riders of major online delivery servers are not employed by their respective delivery companies. That's not to say that we have 111,000 new bike riders with eskies on their backs, as there are also a lot of businesses reluctant to hire full-time employees amid such uncertainty, preferring contract or casuals. And so there is an element of that reflected in these numbers too. So whilst unemployment dropped 0.6%, underemployment held steady at 11.2%. Just take a second to hear that again, underemployed people, 11.2% of our population. Participation rate barely moved, up 0.1% to 64.8%. So only 64.8% of our population is actually participating in work. Aggregate hours worked also up to just up 0.1%, but average hours worked plummeted to a new time or low, shown in this next chart here. Average monthly hours worked. We've been in a steady decline there from around the year 2000, but it's just fallen out the bucket this year. Yesterday's unemployment rate drop came as a surprise to analysts because they were looking at the government payroll jobs index beforehand, which indicated things got worse, not better. The problem is that data works off single-touch payroll data, which only counts normal PAYG employees, whereas the ABS count all these self-employed giggers as employed. However, the ABS figures also count the 3.3% million Aussies on JobKeeper, many of whom are not working but all still counted as employed. 3.3 million on JobKeeper. Roy Morgan tried to overcome the shortcomings of the ABS data, strips out the aforementioned anomalies and reflect who really has a job and who really is underemployed. It's a data set of 4,000 people, so it must be considered as imperfect as well, but at least it is based on reality, not numbers more favourable for the ABS's employer. The chart next shown is for August and doesn't reflect yesterday's ABS numbers. As you can see, they have unemployment at 13.8% and combined with underemployment, the total number of people looking or needing more work, at 22.8%. It's a little over one in five people, Aussies, they aren't getting the work they need to make their ends meet or at the very least boost our consumption, the biggest contributor to GDP, or pay their mortgage outside of government handouts. There's another chart here showing exactly what we just talked about, perhaps the true unemployment levels in Australia. As we discussed yesterday, this is all before the wind back of said handouts, i.e. JobKeeper and JobSeeker 
increases, and hence we are still in a false reality. Those first two charts we showed before are incredibly instructive on so many levels. When you have such an unprecedented situation as we saw in April and May, distorting the scale of charts like these, or GDP, or nearly any other economic measure, people can easily see a V-shaped recovery. Human nature wants to see a V-shaped recovery. The reality is, is that the right-hand side of that V is, or nearly on any measure, still far worse than any recession beforehand. Likewise, things like PMIs, where 50 is the magic line between contraction and expansion, are often looking strong, as they are above 50 right now. What is being lost is not just above 50, but expanding off an unprecedentedly low base, and that is not a V shape. It may therefore be too early to be abandoning risk off and rotating to risk on as a narrative of everything becoming awesome. We are a long way from awesome, as we talked about in yesterday's news, but with shares and houses priced like we are at the moment, it's no surprise what we're in for next. Well, thanks for listening to news this week. Another tumultuous one for everybody. Jump over to anzbullion.com.au for all things gold, silver, ANZ wealth for everything cryptocurrency, and goldsilverstandard.com for our crypto or gold-backed cryptocurrency and silver-backed cryptocurrency tokens. Enjoy your weekend, and we'll catch you Monday.